station of Sidq is not for everyone. It's for khawas al ibad. What Sidq, what type of truthfulness? Rijal un sadaqu ma'ahadu Allah alayhi. Rijal, Allah says about what type, yani, what kind of sadiqin is people who were sadiq ma'Allah. Men who were truthful to their promise fi yawm al-ahdi wal-mithaq fi yawm alastu birabbukum birabbukum qalu bala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all humanity to witness and he asked them am I not your Lord they said yes so that promise only few are keeping and few never left and those are awliya Allah alladheena أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ أَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ Allah described them as people who have iman and taqwa. It doesn't mean they are ma'asoon. Only anbiya are ma'asoon. Uh, but it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawallahum means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certified them. Certify them as his true ibad, mukhlis ibad. And those are the ibad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to shaitan alayhi ma yastahiq, inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim bi sultan, that my servants, you have no power over them. These are the true servants. These are the rijal. So that is... Throughout the history of Islam, history is full of examples of awliya Allah. You know, if you read Risal al uh, he goes, he mentions the alam, the really special ones from amongst them. And this was common knowledge in alam al-Islami. This was something mainstream. Tasawwuf and suluk and mashaykh and awliya and all that was common knowledge. Kitab uh, Ihya' Ulum al Din was taught in everywhere, basically. There are still some places where they read it uh, all the time. But before that, the Kitab of Sayyidina Imam al Ghazali was taught everywhere. They used to teach it, uh, they said, uh, Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, that in every masjid under the Ayyubi rule, every masjid, every zawiyah, every, was teaching, you can go there anytime and they would be teaching Hiya Ulum al-Din. So people understood the importance. Now, people don't understand the meaning or importance. And you say tariqa, you say tasawwuf. It's not that they don't want to understand, it's that there is no reference. You know, when somebody tells you something, you remember, okay, I, I have this experience. But nowadays, the people don't even have any experience uh, of what we're talking about. And also, there is a group of Muslims who are out to uh, defame and tashwee, uh, what is tashwee? Deform, deformity. Yeah. They, they are out to deform the name of Sufism and also there are some Sufis, unfortunately, that uh, they're not real Sufis, they're mutasawwifa, means they pretend to be Sufis. And they do things that also bring a bad name to to tasawwuf. But the real the real tasawwuf is tariqatuna tariquna hadi Imam al Janaid he used to say Mukayadun Bil Kitabi was Sunnah. Our our way is is tightly connected to the Kitab was Sunnah. That's the real tasawwuf. I was reading in uh, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim's uh, some of his suhbas from the 80s. 
And he was talking that we live in a time نحن في زمن ليس للحق فيه أنصار He said that we are living in a time in which you don't find على الخير معين You don't find any helpers for goodness And that's why he said when Prophet Wasallam talked about the Ummah of Akhir Zaman he used to praise that Ummah he mentioned in one hadith that I miss my brothers, Ikhwani. And they said, he said, men that came after, you, after me that uh, uh, believed in me without seeing me. And he, used, he said also, Salawat Rabbi wa salamu alayhi, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, that man ahya sunnati inda fasad ummati falahu ajru sab'ina shaheed. Whoever brings back one sunnah of mine, of my way, at the time when my nation is corrupt, when my nation left the way, the true way. He has the rewards of 70 martyrs for bringing one sunnah back that is forgotten. That's why Mawlana Sheikh Nazim was taking very good care of the even the outer sunnas, the amama, the ring, the stick, the jubba, all these things he was very, he wanted everyone to be dressed like this. Uh, even the new murids were even dressing like this sometimes because of this hadith. Because man ahya sunnan, who wears amaim? When I first moved to this area, I went to uh, the masjid, it was Ramadan, and the, we packed. And I was the only one with Amama. And there was maybe 500 people. Even the Imam was not wearing Amama. Even the, nobody was wearing Amama. And this is, Amama is, is an important, uh, there's a book about 40 hadiths about Amama. I think Jibreel uh, Haddad, Jibreel Haddad put together. About the importance of Amama. So, now this, if uh, we were talking earlier, if I go back home, back to Lebanon, and I walk like this in the street, people will think you're either Shia, or, or they will think you are uh, uh, something strange, and something. And subhanAllah, Islam came as gharib. Jaa al-Islam gharibam wa sayaud gharib. Prophet Sallallahu said, that Islam came as something some, when it first, when prophets brought the message, everybody was looking at him like, what is this? This is not the way of our fathers. This is strange. Now we're coming to a time, now if you try to follow the way of Prophet Sallallahu you will look strange. And people will treat you as strange. Uh, something wrong with you. If you try to keep the, the sunnah and the way of Prophet Sallallahu I was wearing, because my sheikh is our sheikh Turkish. So we started to wear uh, this shirwal. <laughs> shirwal is, uh, you know, the, for modesty. And when you pray as a man, uh, you also have to be modest. You can't uh, be modest. Not just women have to be modest. Men have to be modest. So this, these uh, baggy pants or uh, big pants are uh, something that the Muslims used to wear because when you go to pray, you make rukur, you make sujood, you sit with people, yani modesty. Now you go to the masajid, some young guy wearing tight jeans in front of you. Uh, what is this? Where's the modesty? Yani. So when I, I go like this, I wear some, because I only have these clothes. I've been wearing them for 20 some years. <laughs> I stopped buying other clothes. So when I go, I wear my shirwal in the village. And people look at you and say, what is this, wearing shirwal? Why? Modesty. So you go to pray, you go to aib, you sit in front of people. Also, you have to be modest. But these things are lost now on people. They're, they're, uh, they don't know the basics. So we say, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. They asked Mawlana Sheikh Nazim one time, Sheikh, we come to your uh, group and there's five, six people, ten people. 
And we go to other places, thousands, hundreds, you go to, he said, uh, if you go to the flea market, you have thousands. But go to the jeweler, there's only a few. <laughs> there's only a few people <laughs> that know the value of it or can afford it. He said, but flea market is full. So because people don't know the value, yeah, places that, that's how it is. So Mawlana is saying, he said uh, that uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam سيكون من بعد خلفاء ومن بعد الخلفاء أمراء ومن بعد الأمراء ملوك ومن بعد الملوك جبابرة ثم يخرج رجل من أهل بيتي يملأ الأرض قسطا وعدلا كما ملئ ظلما وجورا He saying that Prophet ﷺ informed us that after after uh, خلفاء أمراء and then ملوك and then after that جبابرة so what that means, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rayyan, get some chair for Khaltu Nabila. She's, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's one chair. Oh, there's one more chair. Nabila? Chair? You sure? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So there was 30, 30 years of Khilafah. After that, after that, we had uh, Umar Bani Umayya and Bani Al Abbas. After them came the Muluk of uh, Uthmaniyin, and after them Jababira. After them tyrants. This is the age of tyrants. We have to know what age we are living in, so we act accordingly. Mushayk, can Sheikh Al Habib Al Mashhur. Uh, Abu Bakr, rahimahullah, he has he was focused on this fiqh taghayyurat about the time that we live in. Uh, please sit, you can sit on that side. That section is all for ladies. Yeah, Bismillah. The men can come forward if, if we have more uh, people. They can uh, they can the young ones can sit in here. Inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So we are in the age of tyrants now. This is not the age anymore. Even the age of kings is finished. And tyrants, they are following the whims of shaitan. And Mawlana Sheikh Nazim was saying that when, uh, after, the, after the Ottomans, they, they killed 40,000 alim. Ottoman, after the Ottoman time, the people, the people that took over, alayhim ma yastahiqu, they, they killed 40,000. You, if you have, if you have a shirt like this, with this neck, that was illegal. Even the shirt was illegal. Uh, the beard, illegal. And for, for wearing a beard, or for having a, for having a uh, shirt like this, or for wearing a hat, you you might get Adam. Uh, you might get killed just for that. So forty thousand alim was killed at that time. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So we. What is our duty to live at that time? He says, اعتزلوا الفرق, Prophet He said, at that time, people will be calling, we are the ones now carrying the banner of Islam, or the other ones will say, no, no, we are the ones. And Mawlana said, don't believe in any of it. He said, at that time, wait for the one who will carry the banner of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu banner is in top copy. The, uh, the flag of Sayyidina Muhammad is in top copy in, in Turkey. And Mawlana Sheikh Nazim was saying at that at the time, a lot of time, Sayyidina Al-Mahdi will be getting that banner and that flag. 
I say only that flag is able to bring Muslims under one, one way. But before that, he says that you will have many people claiming, carrying flags, this and this flag. He said, leave them. <coughs> Don't be involved in politics. Don't be involved in uh, 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 fitan, in any kind of... Uh, everyone will be selling their way, and we see now what's happening in the, in the Muslim world because of people who, in the, in the name of wanting to bring back the uh, golden age of Islam, have destroyed the Muslim world in its entirety. This is no time. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And before we can help other people, we have to, are we, are we our own kingdom, our own being? Have we sorted uh, our, uh, is this being here under the control of Rahmani or Shaitani? Is our ego doing as it's like and running rampant with our being? Because Sayyidina Ali says, don't think you are something small. You are, you, everything is cont contained in you. Human being has many secrets. We, we think we are one thing, but we're not. We have uh, nafs, we have hawa, we have, we have uh, shaitans uh, making waswas. We have uh, cravings and inclination. And it's, we're, we're a mix of so many things. Even on the physical level, now they're saying that the human being is made of so many billions of organisms that he can't survive without. Even the bacteria we have. So this being here, is it under whose control? Before we can go out and, and say we want to save others and we want to save the world and we want to help, are we under our... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Allah is the, 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 the sincere religion are we fully sincerely ibad are we, un, are we, can we say ilahi anta maqsudi wa ridaqa matlubi when we stand to pray and we say Allahu Akbar are we really submitting and making sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or what's happening in our hearts what's occupying it so our Shaykh, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim, he says, إِذَا كَانَتِ الْعُبُودِيَةِ غَيْرَ خَالِصَ لِلَّهِ فَإِنَّهُ يَتَرَبَّ فِيهَا أَنَانِيَةَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ وَمَنْ أَصْبَحَ ذُو أَنَانِيَةَ أَنَانِيَةُهُ تَحْرِقُهُ وَيَقُولْ مَوْلَانَ أَنَّ مَنْ يَقُولْ أَنَا كَأَنَّهُ يُحَارِبِ اللَّهِ لِذَا وَجَبَ عَلَيْنَا بِكُلْ قُوَتْنَا is not purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will develop this selfishness, this self, uh, self-worth, false self-worth. And we will start to, uh, yani that will be like having partners in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we worship. And Mawlana was saying, if you do not rid yourself of the selfishness and ujub, seeing yourself as important, self-importance, that's the real word. And if you don't rid yourself of anger, and that's the symptom of ananiya, is anger. Because if you, if you give yourself too much self-importance amongst others, then it's easy for you to get angry. Because no one is really giving you that self-importance that you demand. Therefore, if somebody says something you don't like, well, you get upset. That's, that's, that's one of the signs of ananiya, is ghadab. And that's why Prophet ﷺ told the Sahabi, al-ghadab kufrun. He said, advise me. He says, he said al-ghadab kufr. Ghadab is disbelief. Kufr is to deny. He said, advise me again. He thought maybe... <laughs> He wanted something more elaborate, maybe. Allahu A'lam. He said three times, Al-Ghadab Kufrun, Al-Ghadab Kufrun, Al-Ghadab Kufr. La Taghdab. Don't, don't, the, the actual hadith is La Taghdab. He says, don't, don't be angry three times. 
and in another narration, al-ghadab kufr, مش هيك? That's that's uh, that's what Mawlana is saying about the Ananiya. That because it's it's stemming from seeing your self-importance and whether knowingly or unknowingly, you're associating yourself with your Lord. So before Mawlana was saying, if you if you're still under the thumb of your nafs and you're saying Allah, Allah, he says the angels are saying liar, liar. Back to you. May Allah forgive us. And this was this this talk I think was in the 80s in uh, in Lebanon. But as Mawlana is saying, we are living Akhirul Zaman, and we should strive to put our bad manners under under uh, control. But also we, sh we should know also that Allah's mercy is vast. And we mentioned earlier the hadith, مَنْ أَحْيَا سُنَّةِ عِنْدَ فَسَادُ أُمَّةِ فَلَهُ أَجْرُ سَبْعِينَ شهيد. That if you do one thing according to the sunnah that is lost, it's as if you have the reward of 70 martyrs. So we should strive in our day to be with people who are engaged we need to help each other. Like this gathering, coming together, for what? Why are we here? What is the niyyah? Why do we come to sit here? Why am I sitting here? We should be coming for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coming, Ya Rabbi, we are coming to praise you, to mention your name. We are coming seeking your nearness, your forgiveness. We are coming because we are believers. Shaykh, type this gathering, when you come to this gathering, one of the uh, results is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if, if you come to a majlis dhikr, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam them, that real majalis of dhikr are gardens of paradise to take from. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a people come together for in another hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, ask his angels what are they doing there for? Uh, what, what did they come for? He said they came to praise you. Or in uh, another narration they came seeking your heaven and they're trying to stay away from your hell. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the hadith he says أُشْهِدُكُمْ أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَهُمْ I am making you witness, all my angels, that I have forgiven all of them. And they, they say, Ya Rabbi, amongst them, there is one person, he came, but you know, he doesn't care. He's not coming to honor you, to praise you. He's coming for something else. Yani, we're paraphrasing, but mainly he's come, not coming, he ha doesn't have ikhlas, he's not coming for your, for your worship. He's not coming for your praise. He's coming for something else. Maybe he knows somebody, uh, he owes him money. Maybe uh, he thinks that he's going to gain something out of this uh, gathering. Maybe he doesn't believe, or she doesn't believe, but they're coming because their friends are coming. Who knows? He, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُمُ الْقَوْمْ لَا يَشْقَى بِهِمْ جَلِيسُهُمْ He said, they are the people that anyone comes to, their, to the majlis and sits with them, they will reach eternal happiness. So this is what we started the talk with. This majlis is connected to a sadiqin. We're not claiming to be from those people, but we are sitting with that permission of a real awliyaullah. Our Shaykh Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad and his father Mawlana Shaykh Nazim, they are true men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're sitting we're asking their support in the beginning and madad, and we uh, are making rabita, trying to make rabita with our hearts to, the, to their hearts, and we're sitting with that permission. So this majlis is tied to them, not the one sitting. That one can be replaced any minute. The sheikh can say, you know what? You now sit on the side. It doesn't matter. But it is a majlis 
we say Sheikh Ali Shah alaykum as he uh, he put in the captions under the guidance of Sheikh Muhammad Adil that's what this majlis is it's under the guidance and the connection of our teachers and with that inshallah we'll start khatm al khawajagan the dhikr ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة